I wasn't a huge fan of the Renaissance. I really didn't like to see uh, the Tories. Uh, but uh, I think if I'm honest about it, I was really just frustrated because we had Tom Hanks, we had Steven Spielberg, and we had basically the entire Band of Brothers Hollywood uh, crew, and we still couldn't beat the Rockasons. Uh, there was just something about the Rockasons and their pride and their esprit de corps that we just couldn't touch. Uh, so with all of Hollywood mass behind us, uh, we were still uh, second place, even on side of our, our own installation. Uh, so clearly, uh, my problem was more jealousy than it was any kind of a dislike for the Rockasons. Uh, then I found out I was coming here and I, I was going to be Rock Six. Uh, it is really when it dawned on me uh, as we started going through kind of the Rock Association uh, participation and how this reunion was going to go that I really understood what the true power of the Rock songs were. Uh, this regiment is the strongest regiment in the Army because of the association. Uh, you guys provide us a link to our history. Like every unit has history, but not everyone has that link where it's concrete for them. You guys are that concrete link, uh, both to our history, uh, our lineage, and to the traditions. Uh, so I'd really like to just give you guys a round of applause for everything you do to make being a rock facade uh, such a great experience for all of us. Thank you for uh, Mr. Harkins fires me and never invites me to another rock facade event again. Uh, so, so as many of you know, uh, or, or some may not, uh, it was real busy uh, last 18 months for the Rockasons. Uh, three state deployments uh, that the, the brigade went on. Uh, first was uh, into Africa. Uh, St. Eunice to Cameroon, uh, Tunisia, Djibouti, with exercises in some of the, the other countries out there. Uh, not a real traditional AOR for the 101st or for the Rockasons. <laughs> Uh, but an area that's getting increasingly important for the United States as we start to globally compete with China. Uh, so the Rockasons, as usual, uh, called and sent forward uh, to help uh, the United States kind of move into a new area and start expanding our, our presence uh, and our partnership in that area. I don't have much to say to you, not much I can say. I hope this is not my last reunion, but I'm afraid it is. In order to Kind of keep her straight in my mind. I have brought with me a roughly 100 year old bottle of scotch. Now, I want that bottle of scotch in somebody's hands and I can trust. That doesn't include Harkins or Smith either one. I'm going to suck it right down here and have a chance. It's a 100 almost 100 year old bottle of a bottle of single bottle of scotch. And I thought that this is the time deserve it. What I'd like to see happen is hold that bottle closed in its uh, enclosure there with the meat, uh, the material and the wood and the leather, and not open it until the last two guys or the last reunion or the last of the last are there. Bring it open, drink a drink to all of us, and do what the hell they won't do with the rest of it. Now, I want you all to have a drink of it, but I'm afraid you're not going to be around to do it. But, <clears throat> You've seen the movie, kind of reflects some of your uh, memories, I'm sure. Some of them just white line and waved off one way or another, not as sharp as they used to be. I used to know a lot of you by your name. Now I just recognize you by your face, and I'm sorry that I have not said hello and shook the hand of all of you. But I want you to know that I consider you a friend, a brother, and a brother in arms. My life and career was spent in the U.S. Army. The U.S. Army was my wife, but was my age. I didn't mean that big. My wife, my wife. I looked over the army as my family all, all my life. And then my second family came when I got you. Now, some of you here are new to the 187, and I want to just say this to you. You're the damn luckiest people in the world because you're now in an outfit that's unheralded equally by any other unit of its size anywhere in the world. I don't care who they are. Not one unit in the United States Army in any battle, anywhere, any time has ever earned two citations per dollar in less than 30 days, but 3187 did. 
It's unheard of. It's unparalleled. Nobody has ever done it before. You guys did it. Not me. Not the people who run the show. You. And you alone. Nobody else. I'm proud to say I've served among you. And I'm proud to say I consider you my brothers and arms. And I consider you my family. I can do anything for you or help you in any way. The proudest moment of my life was when I was commanding 3187. Commanding a lot of units, bigger and smaller. But this was my pride and joy. Always will be. I thank God for you. And I thank you. Thank you. What was it like afterwards to continue to serve? Because I think our younger generation here, uh, a lot of repetitive deployments and all that, and and, uh, and I really treasure our, the value in our soldiers today as well. But I think that's a lesson on how you cope with all that that would really be great to hear you share a little bit. If anybody wanted to echo something on that, I know a lot of you right now are going to be like emotionally drained and want to say much. While you're trying to find somebody else out there to back and speak, uh, at least give you my perspective. Uh, the Army in 1972 was broken. Uh, we had racial problems, racial strife, we had drugs, we had to attempt to address the uh, diversity of females in the Army. I stayed in the Army to rebuild it, and it's evidenced by Desert Shield Desert Storm. You saw the professionalism and execution of soldiers in 1991. That time period between 72 and 91 was all worth it because we rebuilt the Army, the Army of today. And, uh, you got it represented out there now. Uh, how, how does going through something like that and losing a lot of the members, coming back to have new people come in and fill, does that, does that affect your new relationships? Or does that strengthen how you bond with new people that have come in to become brothers in arms and people that you have relationships with. Uh, I left Vietnam and went home and did that GI Bill thing. And then I sobered up about two years later. I did do a serious bunch of drinking. And uh, I didn't like being a civilian. So I went down to talk to the Marine Corps recruiter. He said, you're too old, we don't want you back. I said, well, thanks a lot. I went next door, shoot the pole with the Army guy, who proceeded to sign me up and said, I can make you airborne, give you $10,000 and send you to Korea. <laughs> That's cool, where's Korea? <laughs> so I went to Korea, and, and there were, that was when the soldiers were we were all volunteers, and it was getting to be a really good army. Uh, everyone that I was with, we had a lot of rangers in the units, all of our uh, NCOs, officers. I did a tour at JSA, and those guys were so tight, you know, up at the, the Truesdale. After that, I went, to, went back, and I went to Fort Campbell, and I didn't know about the Rockassans then, but I went shortly because they stuck me in 4th, uh, 5th of the 187th. Then they moved me to 4th of the 187th. Then I went back to Korea. Then I came back to Fort Campbell when I went to 3rd of the 187th. And 3rd of the 187th was... Yeah, they were pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> 